Um, so I apologize to our next presenter who's going to join um, online. We're, we're over, but we, maybe we can cut into the ProAction Cafe 2 time. And so uh, Mylene Coolbreath from the Graduate School is going to join us uh, through Zoom. Um, there she is. And so um, uh, Mylene, I'll be uh, advancing your slides. So please give me an indication. Um, I think you'll have to unmute yourself. I got it. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so I, I love a good crowd interaction. Um, so my name is Mylene Colbreth. I use she, her, her pronouns, and I work in the Graduate School Diversity Office. Um, today, we are going to um, have a, a walk through the Graduate Sulu, which is a graduate student satisfaction survey, essentially, that has us look at how students experience their space here. Um, I'll give an overview of some of the overall climate numbers, but realize that the work that's done here is really program specific. Uh, so we'll spend the majority of the time going through four questions that can prompt us through how do we get from um, seeing the data and then processing through it. Next slide, please. So the graduate SIRU uh, results for 2019 have come out, and this is what we're looking at. Um, it looks as if, uh, based on overall numbers, that graduate students are satisfied with their experiences here. You can see um, here on, and I'm using my cursor as if you can see me, so I apologize for that. Uh, you can see on the left side, it talks about 89% of students. And the report is based on students who strongly agree or agree. And that's how they were asked the question. Um, so 89% of the percent of the students believe that their faculty respect them regardless of their background. 84% um, believed or reported that there was solidarity among students. And it goes throughout different categories as well. We'll see here 82% um, reported that they strongly agree that for students with disability, it is at least as good as those who do not have a disability. And so it's interesting to see how these numbers uh, surface and what they can tell us and what they don't tell us. Next slide, please. The beauty of the grad Siru is that it allows us to start a conversation and it allows us to look at different aspects of student climate from a couple of different lenses. Um, and the graduate Siru, again, um, is a conversation starter, realizing that the best work for the graduate Siru is done at the graduate level in the programs. Um, how many, and I, I, so I can see you all, how many of you have actually had experience by a show of hands with the grad Siru? If you could raise your hands really high, just so I can get a sense. <laughs> okay, so um, if we go to the next slide, Is that the next slide? Can we go back one more? Okay. Okay. All right. Um, we'll go to this slide then. So part of um, what the grad to, if you go to the graduate school's website, grad.umn.edu, and you look at faculty and staff resources, it'll tell you how to access it. And that's coming up here in a bit. Um, so we're going to look at four prompting questions that allow us to walk through the data. And these questions are not comprehensive in nature, but they're just used to start a conversation. And so we'll go to the first question. First question is, where do you start? Now, this is a question that is, is really up to you and it's really based off of what your priorities are in your college, in your programs, and what you wanna see and how you wanna move the needle. Um, the first step, of course, would be access. So if we go to the next slide, I'll give you an idea of how you can navigate through this. So if you go to the grad website, you'll click on faculty resources. And since we're online, I didn't want to do it in real time. So you'll have some screenshots along the way. But if you want to log on, you can follow along with me. Um, so you'll go to the graduate school website. You'll go to faculty and staff resources. You'll go to internal data portals. And then that will take you to the screen to my right which says grad series 2019 results. And then we'll go to the next slide to see where we end up. And so when you log on, it'll ask you to log in because it is protected for the U. Um, it'll take you to this dashboard. 
And the dashboard for the grad Siru is uh, set up in a couple of different ways to give us different um, scales of data. So this first dashboard on the left is college plots. So if you're interested in hearing or seeing how students are experiencing climate, this will tell you mostly about the college. When you go to the second one, program plots, the program plots will tell you what's happening at the specific program and also at the degree level. The most granular of these, of the three, is the last one, which is the bar graph. The bar graph will allow you to look at not only the college, the program, the degree level, but it'll also have you go into the breakdowns. And that's particularly useful as you um, ask, your question, ask yourself more questions. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is where I typically start. And so there are a number of different um, categories in which you can explore, or modules rather, where you can go through and look at different responses for grad to grad Siru. I let's start at climate because climate typically gives you a nice overview. Um, it gives you a snapshot of what's happening. They look at climate from the program level climate, sense of belonging, and also equity and diversity. And so that gives you an idea of, okay, what's kind of happening here? This is the second of the three that I showed you in the previous slide. And this is one of the jitter plots. And so the jitter plots allow you to look at a question and then also look at the outliers. So if you can see here in this first line, you'll see a, a large majority of the responses are to the right, which is a good indicator. So those are higher responses. And then you'll see the, the dots that are outside or to the left of the dotted line, which is one standard deviation away from the mean. This is where you would look to say, okay, well, what's happening in those spaces and what outliers are those? Now, this particular view is an all view, so it tells you what's happening in all college, in all academic units, in all programs, and for all degree levels. So everyone's illustrated here in this slide. So climate is a good place to start if you're just trying to say, okay, let's get a pulse and see what's happening in the space. But also with national trends and institutional uh, priorities around student mental health, that's also another module that you can go in and decipher through. So if we, if we go to the next one, we'll move to question two. The question asks, how are these experiences different across varying student populations? And this came up quite a bit with all the speakers that have um, shared information with us today, looking at um, how different things affect different populations and the intersectionality of their identities. And so for this particular question, when you're asking how are these experiences different for different populations, uh, the bar graphs, that third uh, chart that I showed you in the beginning is the most useful. And we can go to the next slide to see that one. So this particular view is if I were to go into climate and I went to climate, the category of equity and diversity, you can see at the top, the blue bar, it'll allow you to drop down to look at the college, select the program, the degree level, And so this is a great way to see how, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. This is a great way to see how different student population groups experience things and the differences between those groups. Um, and so it's also important to keep in mind that even though some of the differences may be lower or higher, if say it's only 20% of students who responded in the affirmative said, I strongly agree or disagree that, and it's something that's um, unfavorable. If it's only 20% students, but there are 20 students in the graduate program, because we know that our graduate programs are smaller by nature, then that's still four students who are experiencing living through a rapid or challenging experience on a daily basis. And so when we look through the data, we want to look at the numbers, but then also take a step back and say, how many of our students are being impacted by these space, in these spaces? So let's go back to, we'll go to the next slide. And this next slide will show us um, what we looked at in the beginning. So if you look at 79%, it'll say 75% of students overall answered in the affirmative that their perception is that for racial or ethnic minorities, the climate is at least as good as it is for non-minorities. For the next one, it'll say 84% of the students overall agreed that 
the climate for transgender, uh, gender queer, gender non-conforming students is just as good, or at least as good as it is for cisgender students. And then when we go to the next slide, it gives us an indicator to say, well, what are we really looking at though? And this is why the bar graphs become really important. So we have that same data. And so the turquoise colors tell us what the overall general population perception of um, this answer was. The red bars tell us what that actual lived experience is by the students in that population who answered the question for themselves. So in this comparison, we can see that there's a difference between how the overall perception is, and then we can also see that there, there's a difference in how that lived reality um, shows up for students of that particular identity group. We can go to the next slide. So this gives us another, um, just another view of it. And you can see here at the very top, um, those numbers just illustrated here. And this is what it, those numbers look like on the actual CIRU. So it asks about climate and it'll say cisgender and you'll see the 84% and they agree, they agree or strongly agree to the extent that climate is, in terms of equity and diversity is just as good. But then non cisgendered students, it was only 50%. So now we can consider the third question. The third question is after you know how to access the CRU, you're asking the questions to figure out what's happening in this space. The next question is what else do we know about this topic or experience? And so um, the next slide tells us about additional sources, additional data points that we can use to give us more insight around the student experience. So, uh, and I know it was mentioned earlier, someone mentioned focus groups or listening sessions um, or other aspects and we have internal assessments that you do to take a pulse of graduate student climate. Um, and looking at all those data sources and triangulating them and to say, okay, now what, what messaging do we have? Because we want to be very careful not to make broad based assumptions off of one data set or one tool in particular. And so it allows us to, um, to see how different data sources can complement each other. Um, another thing to look at, and this came from the academic civility um, survey, was to say, how do students experience um, harassment, right? And looking at the differences between degree levels and how different degree levels um, experience things and how that shows up for them. So there was an example, if you go back to the bar graph, you know, it's not on the slides, but if you think about the bar graphs um, in in the grad series, it allows you to disaggregate, right? So you get the information that you have from there. But then you also look at what you have from the civility survey. And the civility survey allows you to also look through different um, student groups and different degree levels. And what we found there was that master's level and doctoral level students responded differently. And how they responded to harassment showed up in different ways. So, so from some of the reports, um, master level professional students were more inclined to report if there was an incident of harassment or incivility, while a doctoral level student may be less inclined to make that report. And so that leads to the question of, well, why? And there are a lot of different assumptions that we can draw or uh, inferences that we can make from, from that. Um, but that starts the conversation of, this is how different degree level students, and it also brings in the question of power and dynamics. And what does that look like when we're trying to figure out how students show up in different spaces. Another indicator talked about if a student actually experienced a level of harassment, how does a master's level student versus a doctoral level student show up in that space? Master's level students reported that they became more anxious and less motivated and avoidant in many ways, like they would avoid the aggressor. Doctoral level students said or reported that they felt anxious but it did not impact their performance level to actually get their work done. And they didn't avoid as much. So the question was, do they not avoid as much because they felt more comfortable or because they couldn't avoid because of the dynamic that exists within those types of relationships, masters versus doctoral level. So this, this information is not conclusive, but what it does is as we start to look through it, it gives us an indication to say, how can we better understand all the nuances that are at play? which I think was mentioned earlier and how important that is in understanding it. So if we go to the next slide, we look at question four. And so question four says we go through the data and we're looking at it and we're making um, 
we're getting all this information, we're triangulating, we're looking at what we have, we know what, what we did. Um, and then the question is, well, where do we go from here? And then the next slide, it will talk about different aspects of the grad series or other topics um, that may be useful for you to consider. Um, it is incredibly important that we found to do some sort of audit or assessment of what's currently happening. Like what types of programs and initiatives do we currently have? What types of policies do we have in place? And are they working? And what does the data tell us about what that looks like in real time? And so here on this screen, it tells you about some areas of consideration as far as climate, health and well-being, professional development, advising, and how they can all be areas where you can kind of pull apart and delve a bit deeper to see what they look like. Um, a consideration is to pay particular attention to degree level, race and ethnicity, social class, and gender identity, and begin to think about how different students experience those things. In the next slide, we look at the importance, or we highlight the importance of acknowledging related changes. Um, so what we find is that, and it's important for us to always mention if a new policy is in place as a result of some data that we collected or as a result of some findings that we have, how do we promote that? Or how do we let our, our students and our faculty and staff know that because we, we had you complete the survey, we did the focus group, because of what was recommended, here is a change that's now been instituted or here's a policy. And then we find that people feel more encouraged and they're more likely to participate in the next survey because they know that their, their suggestions are being implemented. Next slide, please. Questions? This is Teddy and I'll ask this question over and over again today and that is, is this getting pushed out to the faculty so that we see these results and understand areas for improvement? Absolutely. And so um, the website that I gave, you're able to go onto that site and it's completely accessible to you. So you can look through all of the, you can look through the entire grad series and get a sense of what, what's happening at the collegiate level, but also what's happening within your specific program. Absolutely, it's, it's very accessible at this point. Thank you, thank you. I think access is great, but I'm not sure that people know they have access. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Do, I see some, some head nods. Is that the sentiment in the room? Yes. I can speak to that a little bit. I've had a, um, conversations with a couple department chairs and they, this was a, a little early on because I know there's been a lot done by the grad school to communicate that this um, data is available um, in more recent months, mm -hmm. but they were not necessarily aware of their access. And okay. so I think it's actually everyone in this room should be going back and asking faculty they know about have, do they, are they aware of the information? Have they accessed it? Are there issues with the access and what are their impressions of the data? And then we will actually know how well it's being used. And also the, the data should be readily available as well. I know that um, Scott Lanyon and Yoji Simizu went to many of the colleges have, have already gone to the colleges and shared that information with the dean level and asked that it be shared throughout. So that's another access point too. And just one other thing to reinforce that. So Scott Lanyon is going to SCAFA, the Senate Committee on Faculty Affairs next week. And he's also bringing these grad zero data into academic program reviews that are ongoing in a systematic way so that those reviews are considering the data um, mm -hmm. as they recommend changes in grad programs going forward. So I completely agree with your point, Teddy, because I don't think a lot of people know about it, but I, I think people are making, making, um, making sure efforts exactly. to do that. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, hi, yes, I just had a question about to what extent the Graduate Diversity Office has been or is interested in working with equity um, committees in each of the schools um, to kind of piece out this data and use it more meaningfully? That's a great question. So that's part of the function of my role. And so I've met with quite a few already and we go through this, we, we, depending on how many people decide they want to attend, what we found it most useful is if we get a group together and figure out which parts of the data we want to dive into and split us up into groups and have each group go through and ask some questions about the different modules and come back together and talk about them as a group. And that's been a, a, a hands-on way to, to get more breadth 
and depth at the same time. So yes, absolutely. Um, I would be completely open to coming in and doing some of that work with you all. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi, I'm Lara Friedman Shadlov, and I'm with the uh, University Libraries. And I'm wondering if this survey, which I'm not as familiar with as the undergraduate one, does it have any data in it about graduate students' experiences with not strictly their academic program, but with things like the libraries? So there are some questions in the series about services and resources on campus, and it's not as robust as some of the other questions, but there is information there. Yes. Any online questions? No, not, not at this point. Mylene, I have a question. Um, yes. I'm curious about what you're hearing from graduate students themselves um, when the graduate um, school interacts with them about this data. Are they aware of it? And also, do they have concerns? Um, it's a mixed bag. So some students are aware of it. Um, some students are aware of it and did not complete it for, for a number of different reasons. And some students are really excited about the opportunity to have focus groups or listening sessions to supplement this data. Um, and so that those have been spaces where students have shown the most interest. Um, and I'm hoping that we can strong and really we found that there are programs who have done uh, listening sessions or focus groups in the past, and they're, they're using that as a way to um, supplement some of their data. Um, what we like is the opportunity, especially at the doctoral level, to come in and do a listening session and be sure that no one else in the department, as far as faculty or staff, are in the listening session. And we've, we're, our intention or our hope is that we're able to get um, a more uncensored version of the student experience because that power dynamic isn't in the room. And then being uh, very intentional about protecting the identity and the safety of the student when they're reporting back to the program to say, okay, this is what's come out of that, that session. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, I'd like to thank Mylene. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. So in the two minutes we have before our next session, or maybe it's one minute now, um, if you t could take a few, um, uh, take that minute to think about the questions that we had for you in the exercise two, which is on page 12, what did you learn about the gateway course and um, courses, the course grades uh, presentation that Peter gave and also about the graduate student climate? And then what's one action that you can take in your work to support this work? And if you don't mind noting it on a post-it and adding it to your comments, maybe label it exercise two or something that would be really useful to us. Um, and then in another minute, we will move on to the next presentation. <laughs>